I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. And if you're in no contact, focused on personal growth, my workbook series, The Knowledge, will help you make changes like you've never made before. Available now at AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And today we're gonna to be talking about how do most relationships begin? You know, Margaret, a lot of times people wonder, like, how do I find somebody? How do I have a good relationship? Yep. How do I have something healthy? You know, a lot of times we go out on dates and it doesn't wind up going anywhere. Right. And I think there's a lot to that. Absolutely. So Margaret's got some good research to look at how do most relationships start? I read this article and I thought it was interesting enough that I wanted to share it. I think it was done in Canada and the research was done by someone named Kyle Schnitzer. Mm -hmm. um, so I want to give him his due. And he says, two thirds of romantic relationships begin as long term friendships, according to a new study. Wow. Right. That's what two I said. Two thirds. Yeah. That is really surprising to me. Isn't it? People say they prefer to fall in love with friends over meeting through mutual friends or meeting at a bar, and I will add, or on, you know, Tinder. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Studies rarely explore love via friendship. Wedding season is upon us, and for those fretting about finding their one true love, it might come in the form of a lifelong friend. While storybooks and movies will tell you, by chance meetings spark long-term happiness, mm -hmm. a new study found that falling in love with your friend is more common than you think. Certainly wow. it was more common than we thought. Yeah, I thought for sure. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> about two-thirds of romantic relationships begin as long-term friendships. Research from the University of Victoria in British Columbia, Canada have pointed out. The study published in the Journal of Social, Psychological, and Personality Science, the second time today we've come across that, mm -hmm. explored love in uncharted waters. Mm -hmm. The Friends First Way, which researchers said has been overlooked for decades by research. Okay? Wow. Um, there is more than one pathway to romance, but relationship science does not reflect this reality, said researchers of the study. Our research revolves that relationship initiation studies published in popular journals and cited in popular textbooks overwhelmingly focus on romance that sparks between strangers yeah. and largely overlook romance that develops between friends. This limited focus might be justified if friends first initiation was rare or undesirable, but our research reveals that it is just the opposite. Really? Yeah. How often does romance stem from friendship? The study used self-reported data from several different studies featuring nearly 1,900 people okay. who were asked to answer the following questions. What was your relationship with your partner before you became romantically involved? Mm -hmm. Friends, friend of a friend, acquaintances, worked together, had never met before other. Okay. Researchers said that they found that 68% of romantic relationships budded from friendship. Some of the studies found that many long-term friendships spanned months or years. And in one study focusing on college students, the friend stage lasted nearly two years before turning romantic. Wow. Okay, there was a lot made of um, the Prince of England there, the future King of England and his wife. They went to school together and had been friends for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, okay, interestingly enough, Participants said that becoming friends first was rated the best way to start a romantic relationship, making it better than meeting through mutual friends at school, at a bar, or a social club, or even finding romance with a colleague. Mm -hmm. What about at a castle? That would be very nice. <laughs> there are a lot of people who would feel very confident 
saying that we know why and how people choose partners and become a couple and fall in love. But our research suggests that it is not the case, um, said lead author Danu Anthony Stinson. Mm -hmm. We might have a good understanding of how strangers become attracted to each other and start dating, but that's simply not how most relationships begin. Who knew, right? That is surprising to all me. those rom-coms. You know, I find that kind of surprising that with all the dating sites and Absolutely. and ways to meet, that most people are still meeting through friends. Through friends. What do you think about that? Well, I think it's wonderful, but I certainly was surprised to hear it as well. Yeah. I do remember some writer, unfortunately I can't remember who it was, saying that um, love is friendship all aflame. Uh, was somebody famous, somebody out there probably knows who said it. Mm -hmm. um, but apparently it's much more common that we might, than we might have thought. And I certainly have had several calls from people who wanted to talk about people they had known forever. But again, it, was, it seemed like a small percent mm -hmm. um, of that. But I think it's wonderful. And probably by that time you know each other temperamentally, you know what food the other person likes and you know what time of day is good to call them so you probably know a whole lot of the stuff that makes newlyweds crazy trying to trying to get used to and work through yeah you know um a couple things come to mind for me like you know if you know somebody for a long time you know their values yeah you know how they treat people you know how they show up in life maybe areas that they struggle or areas that they do well. Right. Um, so those can be uh, a nice thing to start off knowing about Absolutely. somebody. And when you're friends with somebody, you genuinely care about them Absolutely. as a person. Absolutely. You know, I, I find that so many people date, but they wouldn't be friends with that person if they weren't dating. Right. So when you really care about that person and you laugh with them and you share things with them and you can trust them i mean those are all great things to build a romantic Absolutely. relationship if you're looking for something long lasting right you know i think maybe if somebody's looking for something you know just like a fling and not something meaningful then you're not going to be risking a friendship right right because i think a lot of people are afraid to give romance or romantic relationship a chance a try right. because they're afraid that they'll lose that person as a friend right i've heard that many times which yeah. is it is a possibility a point. yeah i mean sure that is a possibility that um if you don't work out as a couple you might not be friends after that but you know if you're both mature enough in your expectations or the way you communicate and in your mutual respect for each other, you know, entering it and the way you treat each other in that relationship, I think it's only going to make it flourish. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. And, and as long as somebody's not really disrespectful in the way they end that romantic relationship, that makes a huge difference. In other words, if you wind up dating a friend and you build a nice relationship, but for some reason it doesn't work out, if that person cheat lies to you and cheats on you, I mean, that's of course gonna really hurt any possibility of remaining friends after that. But if they're respectful of you and handle it like an adult, then I think like it's- Like you say, if they're both grownups, yeah. I'm sure you'll survive. Yeah. Um, continuing to be friends. But you know, we think of all the sad relationships we see where people were brought together by attraction. Now, attraction is the most wonderful thing in the world. Nobody's knocking it. Um, but I was just reading the other day when I was researching a case where this couple was wildly attracted to each other, felt all that magic in the beginning, moved in together, and two years later was saying, why, why, did we, why again did we do this? And they didn't no. really know each other at all. Um, and, you know, when you're blinded by the oxytocin and the magic of the early stages, I think you tend not to do the work that you need to do to really get to know and understand your partner. And, and on top of that, Margaret, the more you've worked through your own stuff and that you're coming from a healthy place looking for a healthy relationship, I think the more likely you are going to look at your friends and say, we can build on something Absolutely. as opposed to if you still haven't worked through your stuff and you're just looking for lust and hooking up yep. with strangers. Yep. I would agree. So apparently it's a good idea to think a little bit about that. 
Um, and I can think of many people I know who have um, had friends and I have sometimes wondered why it never became romantic, you know. Um, but there is the concern that you could learn that, leave, lose that person. Yeah. It doesn't have to happen. And like I said, Margaret, if you act like adults going into it right. and throughout the relationship and even in the way that you end it, that person's chances are, you know, they're going to be more likely to say, okay, you know, maybe we take some time not to see each other for a while, but, mm -hmm. you know, I still care about you and want you in my life as a friend. Yep. You know, it's a, it's a difficult situation to navigate. Um, certainly different than if it's just somebody you've met somebody on tinder met. yeah you know exactly because exactly. you really respect this person right. Right. you know so you're but you know margaret one of the other things that i think is that over time i think people tend to take the people in their life for granted right and when we do that we are maybe colder to them or dismissive to them or don't are less empathetic and caring right. And so I think if it's a friend that you're dating, you already value them. Mm -hmm. And so I think you might be less likely to uh, become so dismissive of yes. who they are and I what their agree. needs are. So it reminds people to take a second look. Um, or a first. Or a first look, yeah. <laughs> um, you may already know this person really well. Um, and I think it's a terrific idea and there are many articles these days about how your lover really needs to be your best friend like they'd be the first person you tell either good news or bad news to yeah. you know I can't wait to call so and so you won't believe what happened mm -hmm. you know and if that's the person that you're calling look again yeah you know look again I know I've seen it in my own yeah. life yeah. where people that you know we didn't date in the past are or would be interested in dating now because they've grown through some of their Absolutely. stuff. Absolutely, yeah. And, you know, they have worked through a lot of their issues that may be they were attracted to guys that were alcoholics or jerks or mistreating them. And I can think of a couple of girls that I was friends with that were in those situations. Yes. But now they'd be like, you know, yeah. and they've let's, said it or... Let's take, yes, let's take another look at this. And just remember, these Canadians are pretty smart people. Um, Is so that right, eh? Eh? Yeah. Um, o Canada? Yeah. Um, I always liked reading their studies. Um, but it's wonderful research and it's something we should be aware of because we're so caught up in the romance. Yeah. Hollywood isn't going to tell us this, you know? Maybe I'll start a, a dating app called Friends First. Okay. <laughs> well, you've had other wonderful business ideas, Craig. Don't well, dismiss it too quickly. I've had so many people say, start a dating site. <laughs> oh, yeah. Over the years, yeah. Uh, um, I'd probably need a billion dollar backer to start something like that. Absolutely. All right. So the interesting research, Margaret. I hope you guys like this one. Of course, if you want to get our help personally, just go to my website, askcraig.net. Sign up for the coaching option that works best for you. I do email coaching and I do Skype. And of course, Coach Margaret here is available for Skype coaching. If you feel that I can be helpful, please sign up. And just click on Margaret on the top of the website to do that. But that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And we will talk with you soon. To get my help personally, go to AskCraig.net and click on Schedule Coaching and choose the option that works best for you. I do email coaching or Skype. To schedule a coaching with Margaret, Click on Margaret on the top of the page and order a Skype with her. For the Knowledge Creative Healing course, click on the link at the top of the page and click Get Started Now.